What's up, Stark? Derek Gordon here, along with Dan Kane, for another episode of What's Up, Stark. After a slight Thanksgiving break, uh, really excited to be back here. And just as a reminder for those of you who listen to us regularly on the podcast, uh, please do sign up to, uh, and subscribe on our YouTube feed. A lot of people have been watching the videos, which we've been excited about. But to make sure you get them every week, please do subscribe, like, and uh, we'll we'll see you in person as opposed to just uh, on the pot. So. Um, Dan, we are excited to be here after uh, yes. the little break, and uh, I know you've done some homework on Doko in your, your past life, so I you mind giving us a little intro today? This is one of my happy places in Canton, and I know <laughs> in the years as well. Mm -hmm. We're at Doko Donuts and Coffee, which is at the corner of Hills and Dales and Woodlawn, next to Lobie's, mm -hmm. and we're here with Grayson Bowers. This is a family-owned business from originally from Dover, and... I try not to come here too often because I, <laughs> I was telling Grayson, um, my mother is a big fan. I take her a mini cream stick every time I go visit her. And nope. <laughs> my, my wife is going to hurt me if I don't end up with an old fashioned to take her. Oh, so okay. we're, we're in the okay. same boat there. All right. We'll get you fixed up. All right. Good. So Grayson, why don't you tell us how long you've been here and kind of how you came to open in Canton. Sure, yeah. So we've been here in Canton. We opened in November of 2019. It has been a very fast four years for us here. Um, kind of hard to believe, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we opened our original location in Dover. Uh, that would have been in 2016 that we opened, right around June. Um, so yeah, uh, we have three locations. We have, so we started in Dover in 2016. The next year we opened in Sugar Creek and this is our third location. Uh, so yeah, we've just kind of been chugging along here. Um, I guess you probably want me to go into a bit of an origin story here. So we're, uh, <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah. So we are from Texas, from Texas correct. originally. We didn't yep. move here to make donuts. No, originally. we did not. We came here, uh, working separate jobs and that work kind of ran out and we just loved the area so much. And it was the first time that all of the family was in one place for the first time in, in quite a few years. And we wanted to keep it that way. So that's when donuts came in. So my dad, uh, he, owned two different donut shops in Texas growing up so I kind of we all grew up in the back of a donut shop and when we got here and work slowed up we thought you know how can we stick around and we went back to what we knew and luckily had him as our uh, our advisor mm -hmm. and we're able to get it going here so uh, one thing I noticed living in Dover it's you know you've got Dover New Philly those are sister cities so mm -hmm. to speak and it's about 40,000 people there were no donut shops uh -huh. uh, the nearest donut shop to mm -hmm. us was about a 15 minute drive okay. so that was a, a pretty easy opening the door of like this place needs a donut shop mm -hmm. and the rest is history were you really busy in Dover when you first opened? Yes, like, we were. Was there a crowd? It, it was it was pretty crazy. So we had the most rudimentary equipment. Everything was hand rolled. Everything was hand filled. The jelly pumps, it was like the old antique style. Mm -hmm. We still have them hanging in Dover actually, but just everything was hand filled. Uh, so yeah, we opened there. It was, we could not imagine the response. I mean, for our first probably two weeks in business, line out the door, we found ourselves in a spot where it was like made to order donuts because we were making them in the back. My mom was filling them and I them. <laughs> it was like we would be in the back and we would just hear coming back two lemon, two cream, two chocolate. And it was just keeping up as quick as we could. The cases were mostly empty because we had ran through all of our current yeah. stock and we were just trying to keep up. So there's been a lot of evolution through the years. And luckily now we have systems in place where it's a pretty pretty even keeled operation. Um, it's still hard, that's one of the struggles. It's still hard to predict how much we're gonna sell in a day mm -hmm. and kind of forecast that. Um, that's something that we go back and forth on. That's probably what we spend the most time worrying about and thinking about. And luckily we've been able to put systems in place. We have what we call a daily donut order, a DDO. And that kind of, at this point, we have four years of data to go back on and look at and see how we do. Um, we've even joked about incorporating weather into those stats just mm -hmm. to try to get an idea. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's pretty strange. There's just certain days where everybody wakes up and wants a donut, and it's like a nine or ten o'clock sellout where you're just like, what? <laughs> Was there something going on I didn't know about? So does a cold, crappy day like today 
make for better donut weather or worse donut weather? It typically does. Makes More me often want a donut than not. Today. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that's what, very early on, we had a, a lady who was a regular customer. She lived right behind our original shop, and she told us right off the bat, this is comfort food. So mm -hmm. the cold days, the rainy days, that's it it's going to drive people here. And it, it has, yeah. How did and then, oh, I'm sorry, Dan. No, go ahead. Then there will be days where it is the most beautiful day you've ever imagined, and it's our slowest day. <laughs> and I figure everybody's out at the park or, yeah. or whatever the case may be. Well, we, we've had plenty of days taking our donuts over to Tama Shanner and, and having a little walk. We feel like we're counterbalancing yes. all those yes. the yes. calories. Yep. But <laughs> sure. you, you mentioned making the move up here to start counting into, into Canton, and obviously there's a little more competition here. You've got Mary Ann's, Johnny's. I, I could go on the list yeah. with some very long-standing loyal brands but yeah. you guys were able to I think get a really loyal following very quickly so what what makes you stand out you believe from some of the other uh, yeah. local favorites so that's one thing and I've got to shout out my dad on this but he's always been the stickler of we're gonna make a quality donut mm -hmm. you know he, he always says if you're gonna do something you may as well try to be the best at it mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the the approach we take we really what we always say is we have a very light and fluffy donut and we try to stick to that and just regionally it's it typically seems to be heavier donuts mm -hmm. and we just feel like that kind of sets us apart from the competition um, the other thing is just taking care to make sure that quality ingredients are going into to our product and that has been especially difficult over the past couple of years um, you know uh, I won't go on an inflation rant, sure, yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. know it, it's been our supplies have went up uh, the cost of doing business is just drastically increased and that's something that we've we've really had to battle but we've just kept in mind we're gonna keep the original quality donut nothing has changed uh, as far as what we put into our donuts uh, it's just a matter of being able to do it more responsibly and kind of get through the the economic challenges right now so yeah it's just we really try to focus on keeping that light fluffy donut and and kind of having our own signature dough well, you can sell more if they're lighter, right? People feel That's right. comfortable eating <laughs> more. Yeah. Eat totally. Not That's quite right. so heavy. But. So when I interviewed you previously for the Canton Repository, I remember you telling me about your the apples in your fritters and the cream in your cream sticks and the glaze you use and yeah. some of the really big bakeries and chain discount stores and stuff they have like a really industrial approach right absolutely yep like how how is yours different so i'll start with the white cream cream sticks are our absolute number one seller um our white cream we use real butter in a lot of different places you're gonna find lard that they use yeah we have stayed away from that since the beginning and we feel like that makes all the difference just that real butter in our cream you can taste the difference um as far as our apple fritters those are, you can ask any of our production workers, those are the most fun to make. <laughs> so, are you being sarcastic? Yeah, I am being, I'm being a <laughs> yeah. bit facetious there. So you start with a mound of dough, you get your cinnamon, you take, we use real apple chunks, you spread all that apart and you just start chopping until it just turns into a wonderful gooey mess. Mm -hmm. And then you break them apart, you pat them out. Um, there's a lot of uh, machinery. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. We've kind of stuck with the artisanal approach, so to speak. Um, that's that's something our apple fritters, a, a lot of people rave about our apple fritters. And the other element there is the frying process. Um, you'll find in a lot of different areas. We've kind of, over the years, we've hired on people who have worked at other places. And it's always the same where they go to completely submerge that apple fritter in the grease. And we have to stop them and be like, no, we, we keep them on top of the grease. We flip them. Them, just like any other mm. donut and so what they're that, healthy yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> healthier <laughs> right yeah. but what yeah. that you know that kind of prevents that that film in your mouth of that grease that soaks into an apple fritter mm -hmm. and time and time again that's what people tell us there's no grease you know it, okay. it's just a, a light fluffy fritter so that's kind of what we've tried to stick to the cream sticks are glazed that's, they are. that's the part that kills me <laughs> everything that, that is sets glazed you apart. yep yeah we had uh not too long ago, we had a, a business client that came in and they were going to feed a bunch of people and they said, we don't want our cream sticks glazed. It was going to be a standing order. And they said, we don't want them glazed. We said, okay, that's no problem. So we spit them out unglazed. That went on for about two weeks and they called us and said, yeah, glaze them. Everybody wants them glazed. <laughs> so that, that's definitely something that sets us apart. Just about everything gets glazed, uh, all of our varieties. So only exception to that is your cake donuts. There's a lot of people that enjoy just a very plain, unglazed cake donut. And so that's what we kind of stick to there. 
I like your item. It's called the hubcap. Yeah. <laughs> Unofficial which is the term. Fritters yeah. And your cinnamon swirls that are like this big around. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Those get a lot of attention. They're not a huge seller because there are very few people. Other, we do have people who buy them and then like quarter them, mm. and that'll be four days worth of breakfast. Yeah, they're but. They're, they're not a huge seller, but everybody talks about them, so it's definitely... You don't get shortchanged here in terms of uh, quantity on, yeah. on these, for no, sure. No, not at all. I, I just love everything here. It's so good. Yeah, I, I love the simplicity of the menu. There's only so many things to choose from in a lot of ways. Are there, yeah. are there other things you've been itching to try on the menu or yeah, so, add to? Yeah, so we've we've talked a lot about that. That is part of our pride is that we're just kind of uh, an old, you know, your grandfather's donut mm -hmm. type deal where you come in and it's, it's mostly the basics. One way we want to kind of expand is starting to get into more... Uh, more flavorful varieties you know you'll uh, you'll go to certain shops and see the cereals on the donuts and things like okay. that we've never been a huge fan of that personally however what i've found is that kids love them and that's what i've been told many a times they'll be like oh my kids love going here because they want fruit loops on their donut okay. so that's something that we've kind of talked about expanding is kind of getting more of a variety and more things on top of the donuts but for all this time we've just really honed in on the staples and tried to keep producing the same thing that we've always been known for so you have three shops, and you have to stock them. You're open seven days a week. So do you have, like, a team of elves baking? Like, <laughs> and, and, like, when? Do, what are the hours for that? And then yeah. all this stuff, I'm guessing, is deli you open at 6 a.m. That's so right. So trucks bring this stuff every... Yeah. So I'll, I'll take you through a, a day at Doco. Okay. And I always like to say, you know, I've got friends, and they'll say... Oh, you're in the right business. Two o'clock, you're done every day. That must be nice. It's <laughs> like, I wish. They don't want your alarm clock. Yeah, yeah, yep. So we start, our day starts, I don't know where to start exactly, but basically our bakers get into the kitchen anywhere from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. to start prepping for that next day. They get everything ready. Through the whole afternoon and evening, our bakers are hard at work. They then transition, usually around 9 or 10 o'clock in the evening. Our decorator team comes in. So okay. they begin, so they've just got a blank slate with a bunch of blank donuts. They start filling, icing, doing their thing. They usually wrap that up for our, our two satellite locations. They're wrapping up right about 3 a.m. So our delivery driver shows up every day at 3 a.m. He loads everything up, delivers them out to the stores. He usually gets here to the Canton location about 5 a.m. with the donuts. 5.30, our openers get here. They get ready for the day, get everything prepped, everything put in the cases, and then our actual day begins. So we're open from 6 to 2. So there's there's never a downtime, really. Yeah, it's, it's a 24-hour 24 operation. Yeah. Yep. I don't think people think of that when no, they think yeah. about no, the just, store is only open so many hours. Yeah. They yep. think there's a little bit on both ends, and that's it. But it yeah. it's, it's a... Uh, uh, industry that never sleeps, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> How many glazed donuts do you sell in a day? Between in a the day, three, would sure. you guess? I'm so, somewhere around, I would say, six to 800 easily. Um, cream sticks, and I'll, I'll use a busier day for example, mm -hmm. but cream sticks, anywhere from 12 to 1600 cream sticks a day. Um, to give you an idea, this past Saturday we did. Oh, 10 batches of dough, which is going to come out to right about 800 pounds of dough that we went through. That's that's typically 800 to 1,000 pounds of dough nightly on the weekends. Um, coming off of, you know, our sweetest days, our national donut days, Thanksgiving Eve was a big one for us. There's times where we put out a ton of dough, literally. So it's it's definitely, Fine. yeah. And, and if you saw our production facility, it's, it's a wonder. We have really figured out ways to make it work in there. So... It's it's not some huge industrial kitchen. It's yeah. it's very uh, small and and compact, and everybody just kind of knows their role and gets it done. So, well, it seems like you've you've found success in the three locations you're in. People really really enjoy the product. I'm afraid to ask though, based on what you just told me on the production side, how sure. small the operation is. Are you looking to expand yes, elsewhere? Yes, we are. So, <laughs> um, you know, COVID. Ever since mm -hmm. the the post COVID era here. It's been very difficult just kind of keeping structure, and that's what, for the past two years now, that's been our focus is structure. We've all, so there's seven family members involved. Okay. Um, 
we're all growing our families at this point. My brother Langston just had a baby. My sister Erin just had a baby. I've got a baby on the way, Dan. Oh, breaking news. Yeah. yeah. So everybody's kind of growing their family, and we got to a point where work-life balance. We really tried to focus on that because we want to be here for a long time. You know, we this is our we wouldn't know what to do without Doko. Yeah. So for the past couple of years, we've kind of had to take a step back and just develop the structure to be able to be happy in what we're doing and keep everything, you know, on par. And so we're kind of coming out of that phase and now we're re-entering our growth phase. Um, and I'll tell you, North Canton, that's really where we have our sights set. Um, we, we've really been pushing to get there and it's not anything that's going to be tomorrow, but that is our, our next short-term goal is getting somewhere into North Canton and continuing to grow. So You heard it here first, Stark County. Yes, yep. <laughs> yes, yes. So tell me about, this story involves me slightly, but tell me about what it was like when you opened this shop in Canton sure. and how crazy busy it was and there was a disgruntled customer. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite stories. So Dan came out, you did an article on us when we were just in Dover, mm -hmm. um, and then you came out and revisited us once we opened up in Canton, <laughs> and you did an article, and you hold a lot of power, Dan, because that article for the next probably two weeks, I mean, our production facility was maxed out. It was, you know, we were Way still to go, in Dan. That. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. No, soft <laughs> no soft opening for you guys. Yep. And so as soon as that article hit, I mean, we got busy and it was to a point, I mean, the guy may have been half correct, but it was to a point where our production facility, we just were maxing out what we could get out the door. So you ran that article, a guy came in, he came in twice that week. I want to say he was coming in at like noon or a little after both days we had sold out. So it was just a weird day where I had a call from my Sugar Creek location. And they said, hey, we've got a guy and he's irate. Like, he is very upset and that y'all are sold out. I'm like, we're not sold out out there. No, no, in Canton. I'm like, okay. I'm like, all right, send me his number. I'll deal with it. So then I get a call from Dover. Hey, there's a guy that is irate. I'm like, is he calling about Canton? They said, yeah, he's calling about the Canton shop. I'm like, okay. And of course, I think he called here first. But he made sure to call every location and voice his displeasure. And then you call me. This was all within the span yes, of like yes. an hour. Then you call me. And I'll I already half had an idea, but I thought there's no way, and I answered, and you said, we have really ticked somebody <laughs> off here. So he had went to the trouble of finding your number. He was mad, call. like at me. Yeah. Yeah. You, why did you profile them? I, we, we still say it to this day, but they're not ready for the big time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they're not ready and for so, that Dan Kane effect yet. Yeah. yeah. The so, big time. I don't know whatever Hopefully happened to that guy. I since. hope he's been back. And if you're listening, come back and see us. It's a lot fewer and further between that we sell out these yeah. days. So, <laughs> But how does that, like you open at 6 a.m., right? We do. Seven yep. days a week. What time? And you're allegedly open till what, 2 or 1? 2 o'clock, yep. Okay. 6 to 2, okay. seven days a week. So, like how early have you closed before? Oh, there's been days and... It's it's tough to deal with, but there's been random days where they'll call me at 8:30 and say, "Hey, we oh got gosh. two or three oh. trays left," and, and that's the you know I've talked about this before, but that's kind of the difficulty in making donuts. I always say, if you came to me and said, "Grayson, make me a donut," and I said, "Okay, I'll get right on it," it would be about three to four hours before you saw that donut. Okay. So there's a lot of people that come in and they're like, "Well, just make more," mm -hmm. and in theory that makes sense. But it is such a process when, you know, when you're making donuts, the dough is your boss. You know, that's, you have to let that dough rise. You have to give the correct prep times. And it just is a very lengthy process. So when we have a day like that where we have misjudged or we just have everybody come out of the woodwork, you're kind of just stuck with that. And so it definitely, those days are tough to swallow. But it's also just, it's so hard to predict and forecast, you know, how many people are going to be coming out. Well, we certainly encourage folks to come to your on-site locations, but if there's days where you're, you're closing early, can you tell us where they can find you either on social media or on a website to, Absolutely. to see the product and yeah, learn so, more about it? So we're on Facebook and Instagram, Doco Donuts. Um, that's a, a good source right there. Um, that's, <laughs> it, it's kind of a, so a little bit of a sticking point. We still to this day don't have a website. We are working on developing that out. We've also talked about, you know, online ordering. That's a big thing these days, kind of growing to that. It's just a matter of 
getting the time and energy to put into sure. that when things are so busy here at our say, retail it's, location. Sounds like you've done okay without yeah, it so far. Yeah, so. and that's what, just a quick mm. anecdote on that, our Dover location, we still don't have a sign. So, <laughs> so it's very when, exclusive Yeah, so, so when we opened, I mean, we, we spent two years in Dover getting that building ready. It's a converted garage. So mm. we spent a lot of time and a lot of money getting that open. By the time we opened the doors, I mean, we, you know, we're rubbing change in our pockets at that point. And so we said, okay, we'll revisit this. We'll buy a sign once we get money coming in. And it just never happened. And then we had a, so right across the street from us was a sign company. And they had been there for years and years. And this just still cracks me up to this day, but they did a radio spot that I happened to hear one day. And they said, you know, listed their business name and this and that. Come see us. We're right across the street from Doco. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> there's some irony there that a sign, a sign shop is using us without that's a sign. Funny. There. So, yeah, it just hasn't, hasn't been a necessity. And that's what, throughout this whole process, we've just had to pick and choose our battles. You know, you can drive yourself crazy with all the things that you could be doing. Mm -hmm. But we've just tried to hone in on what works and, and kind of... Uh, one element of that, so when we first started, we did breakfast sandwiches. At this point, we're trying to get back into that space, okay. but we just quickly found people are here for the donuts. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we yeah. had a griddle in the back in Dover. We had an employee manning that griddle, and it just, time and time again, we'd sell a few breakfast sandwiches and a whole lot of donuts. Mm -hmm. So we just tried to focus on, on what works and what sells. Makes sense. Well, congratulations on the success. Uh, we you. look forward to uh, what's to come. and. Appreciate you joining us here today. Absolutely. On, uh, Thank you all for having start. me. Glad you're here. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see yeah. you next time on What's Up Start.